Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, uh, my mind just went blank. something I just wanted to tell you. Oh, right. I do have an appointment with the uh, prosthetic place. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, first of all, yes, they said I can bring the camera. Um, but I, I didn't have, I had a, um, a phone conversation that actually worried me some because it reminded me of sometimes how I feel around people who are providing sort of peripheral care around breast cancer. There's a certain vibe that just drives me crazy. And that is when people treat me with pity. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But um, um, there's this feeling like there's this script where, um, you know, my part is supposed, I'm supposed to play the part of the grateful victim. And I really don't want to play that part. I just, you know, want to have a equal to equal transaction of information and uh, services. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it can be human and friendly and caring, but there's just something, there's this twist where it starts to look like this person is feeling like they're being so benevolent and, and I'm supposed to be so grateful. And, you know, who knows, maybe it's all in my head I don't think it's all in my head. I'm sure it's partly in my head. But anyway, I started to worry that I would do this video for you guys and I would be showing myself getting annoyed with a very, very sweet and well-meaning person. We'll see. Look at this tree. That is pretty cool. It's like a little shelter. Just big enough for one poodle. My back is bothering me, so I'm taking two walks today instead of a walk and a, and a workout. All right, all right. I'm working my way up the hill. That doesn't really help much. I'm listening to Spanish lessons. Hicieron, that's Spain. It doesn't apply to me. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn Latin American Spanish. So, but I knew how to say, what did I do? Que hice? So I'm prepared to make mistakes. Que hice? Hiya, friends. <laughs> Cheers. Ticino, hazelnut, mmm, I love it. Okay, we need to have a serious talk. All right, I'm just uh, making mistakes. Go, oh, go, oh. Go, 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 that happen? Go, 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 it's your birthday. That was a mistake. Okay, so is the lighting nice? Ah. As I was saying, serious talk. I'm really enjoying my tea though. Let me have another sip first. A tiny little teapot. Nice little mug. Delicious. I'm not, this is not a paid endorsement, but oh my goodness. Ticino hazelnut. Seriously. It's good. It sort of tastes like coffee, but I don't really drink coffee. I like the taste of coffee, but I do not like being caffeinated, so... Yeah, so anyway. As I was saying, our serious talk. Um, so when I started making these videos, it was really like a public diary about the experience of breast cancer treatment. And um, the like the physical parts and the emotional parts and and just like the places where life is actually still kind of normal and it was for me it was for my friends and family it was for anyone out there who wanted to know what it was like because they were going through it because they were afraid they'd go through it because someone they love was going through it you know 
it's one of those things. It's pretty dang scary. It was like my number one fear in life was cancer. And then I got cancer. Guess what happens when the number one, your number one fear comes true? Then, like, you process it. And, you know, <laughs> you move on to fear number two, I guess. But basically, you don't, you have one less thing to be afraid of because it's already happening. Well, I don't know. It's not all that honky-dory because I'm still afraid of it. But not in the same way that I was. I don't know if I can explain that better. Anyway, the reason we're having this serious talk is that I want to ask you, what else do you want to know? It's been two years since I finished treatment, and, you know, basically I'm... Mostly my life has gone back to normal. It's not really. Um, but, um, you know, I showed you some of chemo. I showed you some of radiation. Um... I, um, unfortunately was not, I didn't even have a camera when I went through my mastectomy, but I can talk about that, I can talk about any of those experiences, I can give trips, chicks and trip, the, you know, those things, and, um, I just want to know from you, like, what do you want to, what do you want from me? <laughs> because, um, I'm at the point now where... I don't want to make videos just to make videos. I want there to be, I want them to be of, you know, I like entertaining you and giving you a moment of my life and stuff. You know what I'm saying. I'll probably cut this part out. T. Chino. Is there anything else that needs to be said here? Oh, one thing that's pretty interesting is to look back over the videos and see how my hair has changed. What you never got to see, though, was what it looked like before. Hmm. I don't have... Oh, maybe I do have footage. I might be able to get some footage from my brother took some... When I found out I had cancer and I had to have a mastectomy and I knew my arms were going to be like my right arm because I had a uh, right side mastectomy was going to be painful to lift. I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm combing my... I had long hair. And, um, it was very straight and brown. And, um, yeah, so I cut it short. It was sort of like it is now. And then it all fell out. And then it got really curly when it, oh, it came in white. And then it sort of gradually got darker again. And the curls gradually went away. That's like such a small detail, but it's part of the experience. So that's it. I'm turning it off now. Write me comments. Let me know. I will read them, I promise. Zero.